if we have two functions whose sum composes the third function, can we determine the derivative of the third function if we know the derivatives of the functions that compose it? In this case, f of x is the sum of g of x and r of x, but it isn't entirely obvious what should the derivative f prime x be if we know the derivative functions g prime of x and r prime of x. Let us consider the function m of x. If we add m of x to itself, we get m of x plus m of x equal to 2 times m of x. Let's say that f of x is equal to m of x plus m of x. How are the derivatives of f of x and m of x related? We can see that the derivative of f of x isn't equal to the derivative of m of x. The function f of x looks like a vertically stretched version of the function m of x. The points on the f of x line are always twice as far away from the x-axis as are the related points in the function m of x. Moreover, the change in the function f of x has to be twice as large as the change in the m of x over the same stretch of x distance. This means that the derivative of f of x is always twice that of m of x. Therefore, we can say that f prime x is equal to m prime x plus m prime x, which is equal to 2 times m prime x. We can generalize this principle and say if f of x is equal to some constant c multiplied by m of x, then the derivative f prime x is equal to that same constant c times m prime of x. This is what the function f of x equal to constant c multiplied by m of x looks like at various values of c. But what if we are adding two completely different looking functions? In this case, we can't concentrate on the big picture, but we have to zoom into a narrow neighborhood of x. Now then, let us zoom in with our mathematical microscope and inspect the neighborhood of the two functions at some value of x. Please notice that when you zoom in far enough, the functions again lose their splendid rolling curves and become simple, almost linear slopes. If this isn't the case with our particular function, then the situation becomes too complicated for the scope of this video, but it's usually explained in the regular calculus class. Now we can see that g of x plus delta x is equal to g of x plus delta g of x, and also r of x plus delta x is equal to r of x plus delta r of x. We remember that f of x is equal to g of x plus r of x, and that f of x plus delta x is equal to g of x plus delta x plus r of x plus delta x, and f of x plus delta x is equal to f of x plus delta f of x. In the relationship that describes the function f as a sum of functions g and r at the point x plus delta x, we can break down the values of g x plus delta x and r x plus delta x into their component pieces r g of x plus delta g of x and r of x plus delta r of x. Doing so would allow us to say that f of x plus delta x is equal to g of x plus r of x plus their deltas delta g of x and delta r of x. Since we know that g of x plus r of x is actually equal to f of x, we can go on to say that f of x plus delta x is equal to f of x plus delta g of x plus delta r of x. Since we remember that by definition f of x plus delta x is equal to f of x plus delta f of x, 
we can rearrange the previously mentioned relationship and say that delta f of x is actually equal to delta g of x plus delta r of x. That is to say that the small vertical change in the sum function f of x is equal to the sum of the two small vertical changes in the function g of x and r of x. Since the derivative compares the change in the function to the change in x values, we can divide both of the sides of the previous equation with delta x in order to get the rate of change, and we have delta f of x over delta x equal to delta g of x over delta x plus delta r of x over delta x. If we make the change of x really small, then we get the relationship of the derivatives, which is if f of x is equal to g of x plus r of x, then f prime of x is equal to g prime of x plus r prime of x.